Welcome to our worship service at St. Luke's Lutheran Church. We're glad that we are be, uh, being able to record once again to continue to get the message out there to the people that are not able to get back to church at this time or those who do not feel that it's quite safe enough to do that. Uh, just a, a word of a, an announcement that if our governor would determine that the entire state would need to wear face masks indoors, uh, we would be complying with that. And we do have some extra face masks, masks in the entryway now, and we would be getting more, and just encouraging people to do that. Because we're not technically in the city limits, uh, we're not requiring it at this time, but it's still always a very good idea. Our opening hymn is page 54, O Gracious Light, page 54, front of the hymn. Then the word of the Lord came to him. 
leave this place and turn east. Hide yourself in the Kareth Ravine, east of Jordan. You will drink from the stream, and I will command the ravens to provide for you there. So Elijah went and did just as the Lord had said. He lived in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him food and meat in the morning and in the evening, and he drank from the stream. After some time, the stream dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Get up, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. I've commanded a woman there, a widow, to provide for you. So he got up and went to Zarephath. He came to the city's gate, and there he saw a widow gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Please give me a little water in a jar so that I can have something to drink. And when she went to get it, he called out to her, Please bring me a piece of bread. She said, As surely as the Lord your God lives, I have no food except for a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a pitcher. See, I am gathering a couple of sticks so that I can go and prepare it for myself and my son so that we can eat it and then die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do just as you said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from the flour and bring it out to me. Then go and make another for you and for your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not run out, and the pitcher of oil will not become empty until the day the Lord sends rain to water the surface of the ground. So she went and did exactly as Elijah said. He and she, as well as her household, were able to eat for many days. The jar of flour did not run out, and the pitcher of oil did not become empty, just as the Lord had said through the prophet Elijah. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 34. We'll join in reading the refrain together, and the very end, the glory be to the Father, together. And the other verses, I'll read the first part, and you respond with the second. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are attentive to the The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he delivers them. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord redeems his servants. And no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Psalm 34. Following the epistle lesson, there is the seasonal response that is printed out in our service handout. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 20. I rejoice greatly in the Lord now that you have revived your concern for me once again. Actually, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I lack anything. In fact, I have learned to be content in any circumstances in which I find myself. I know what it is to live in humble circumstances, and I know what it is to have more than enough. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, while being full or hungry, 
while having plenty or not enough, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you did well by becoming partners with me in my affliction. You Philippians know that in the beginning of your experience with the gospel, when I left Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you alone. Even while I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once for my needs. Not that I am seeking a gift, but I am seeking the fruit that adds to your account. I have been paid in full, and I have more than enough. I am fully supplied since I received from Epaphroditus the things that came from you, a sweet-smelling fragrance, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will fully supply your every need according, according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. And our seasonal response. Hallelujah. Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Hallelujah. Please stand for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 12, and then verses 16 through 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Go your way. Look, I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Do not carry a money bag or a traveler's bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone along the way. Whenever you enter a house, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a peaceful person is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking what they give you, because the worker is worthy of his pay. Do not keep moving from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are in the town and tell them, kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust from your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom on that day than for that town. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The Seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He told them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will ever harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names have been written in heaven. Here ends our gospel lesson. We will continue now with the Apostles' Creed, and the best place to follow that along with, if you would like to, is on uh, page 19 in the front of the hymn. I believe, believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection 
of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn number 518, Forth in the Peace of Christ We Go, 518, verses 1 and 2. strengthens me. And when he adds those just slight additions, and they aren't disclaimers, but they are important aspects to that phrase, through Christ who strengthens me, then we begin to take a look at the life of Paul and see, was he really able to do that? How could he do that? And how do we as Christians who also believe that when Paul speaks to us in this chapter 4 of Philippians, that when we read those verses and say those verses, that they're verses for us at the very same time. Well, for Paul to say that, we know that that was not boastful. Now, last week in our epistle lesson, we heard from Paul as well 
And he was making some comparisons. Some people in the Jewish line have these things that they pat themselves on the back for. And then he added, and I got that and more. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And with all of those things, he kept on saying, I've got all of that and more. And then his next phrases went on to add, but I consider that all rubbish with the incomparable knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior. Sometimes when we have too many good things that we give ourselves credit for, eventually we come to the conclusion or the decision that we either don't need Christ or that we're so good that anything that Jesus could add for us really wouldn't add that much. And yet God wants us to get those kind of boastful thoughts out of our minds, out of our hearts, and out of our lives completely because without Christ, we have to recognize and realize who we are, what we're bringing to the table, and the acknowledgement that none of it is good at all without Christ. And so that was Paul's situation. He was a rising star in the Jewish church. He was advancing quicker, faster than anyone else of his age, and people were really starting to think this young man could be someone really important because he's doing all the Old Testament requires and requirements, and he's doing them above and beyond. And he even was going so far as when people who were called themselves Christians or members of the way, the followers of Jesus, came into their area, he made it his goal and his purpose to wipe them out, to arrest them, to imprison them, hopefully so that they'd be put to death later. And that's what happened to Stephen, one of the early Christian martyrs uh, in the early Christian church. And Paul was, or Saul was so zealous in this effort that he went to uh, Damascus because he heard that there were Christians there as well and he thought it was his job to go find them, root them out, arrest them, and bring them back to Jerusalem to be killed. And that's when the Lord put him in his place. The Lord made him realize, you thought you were doing all of these great things and patting yourself on the back because you thought they were all for God. But you don't even know God. You have no clue about who God is, what he has done, and that this message about Jesus is the truth. And so when Paul asked that question, who are you? God, who are you? And the answer came back, I am Jesus, the one that you've been persecuting him. He knew this was not going to end well because he was following the wrong God. Well, God had mercy. And God began to show him his strength, his mercy, his forgiveness. And God said, you've been all doing all of these great things that you thought were for the one true God, but were not. Now, we're going to get you into the service of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you're going to be telling people about Jesus. And that's what his life became as his name changed from Saul to Paul, the missionary, the writer, the preacher, the speaker, the counselor, the founder of many churches, the visitor of many churches, one who would pray for people in their time of need and encourage in every way that he could, and nothing stopped him. Now there would be riots. There would be times where he was arrested. But none of those things stopped him from carrying out his activities. And the book of Philippians is proof of exactly that because Paul writes the book of Philippians from jail. 
He's imprisoned. And yet, this is a book of joy. This is a book of confidence. This is a book of, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not giving up. I'm not uh, dropping everything that I'm doing and saying that it was worthless. I'm going to keep on doing that. And when he had visitors, he continued to send messengers back and forth. His letters became famous. His 13 writings, not all of them written from prison, but his 13 letters, his epistles, are ones that we have included in our Bible. And we get to hear about the life of Paul. He went forward. Not because he all of a sudden was transformed instantly on that road to Damascus from being a hater of Christ to a lover of Christ, full of strength and power, but he, came, he began to see the light when the Lord made him blind, and he grew in his faith as he went through that process of serving his heavenly Father and realizing that whatever obstacles came up, God found a way for him to still do his job, to do all things through Christ. Now, what was his goal? And I think that's key to understanding, I can do all things through Christ. This is not a sports slogan. It's used many times as one, but this is a Christian life slogan. What are the things that Christians want to do? We want to reflect the glory of God in all that we say, think, and do. We want to act, to live, to have everything that's going on in our lives focused and dedicated to our relationship with God himself. And it is those things that the Lord promises that he will give us strength, strength and abundance. And he will continue to work these things out for our good as we strive to go forward in this world. And so I can do all things needs to have those last words on them through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me not to become a world-class Olympic athlete, not necessarily to become a millionaire or richer than that. God has given me his faith so that I can do it, everything in my life, to his service and to his glory. And as we start to think about how we can do that on a personal, individual basis, even in our small community, the Lord has us realize there's plenty for us to keep on doing. There's plenty for us to learn from the scriptures. There are plenty of people for us to continue to pray for, both in our congregational family, as well as in our community, and then throughout the entire world as well. God has much, much work for us to do. And he gives us those opportunities to do that. And he promises to strengthen us so that we can do all things. Amen. Please stand. In our order of service, we will continue with the responsive prayer of the church. In the closing hours of this day, hear us as we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the well-being of people everywhere, for the growth of your church in all the world, and for the strengthening of all who serve and worship here, we pray, O Lord. Christ, have mercy. For one another, young and old, for your blessings that come with every stage of life, and for joy in doing your will, we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants who work day and night to bring protection, justice, learning, and health to this and every place, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather and bountiful harvests for clothing and good, it should be for clothing and food, for health of body, mind, and spirit, and for deliverance from all sin and every form of evil, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have gone before us, who have shared with us your good news, whose souls are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom, we give you thanks, O Lord. Thanks be to God. We have some special prayers this evening before we finish the responsive one. We offer a prayer on behalf of Mary Bratz, 
who has gone back into the hospital into intensive care. We ask that the Lord would be with her. And we also have a prayer uh, on behalf of Sue and Jamie McNally, who are going to be celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary this week. Lord Jesus, according to your will, relieve the sicknesses that have come upon your servants, and especially your loved one, Mary Brooks. Restore and renew health and strength so that they may once again serve you in their daily lives. Until this time of gracious restoration, assure Mary and all of us of your presence and love by pointing us to your cross. There the eternal consequence of sin was removed, assuring us that at the last day we will be free from all sins. In your holy name we pray. We also come to you today, Lord, on behalf of Sue and Jamie McNally. Lord, you were present at the wedding feast in Cana. We ask that you would continue to be the guest at all marriages and be a blessing to all married couples. For Jamie and Sue, who are celebrating their 20th, 5th anniversary, continue to bless their home with your presence. Bless husbands to love their wives as you love the church. Bless wives to respect their husbands. Thank you for the marriage relationship that brings husband and wife together to grow in love and bless them to be a blessing to their families and to all of us. In thanksgiving for your many and varied gifts to us, we now commend ourselves to your care. Be our shield and strength, O Lord. Amen. We'll join in Luther's evening prayer. I thank Amen. you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, forgiven me all my sins, and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. May the blessing of the eternal God be upon us, his light to guide us, his presence to shelter us, his peace to unite us. number 496 glorious in majesty um, because of our time constraints we're just going to do the first two stanzas glorious in majesty 496 
Thank you for joining us in worship today. Again, a reminder for all of our visitors and viewers at home, Thursday night services are at 7, Sunday morning services are at 9 o'clock. We also have this broadcast uh, connection on our website with a link to YouTube. Have a great week.